How we doing, how we doing? It's Destination Denver, Colorado, and it's about that time of year. So, the truth behind Denver winters. How cold does it get in Denver? We're talking about it starting right now. All right, this is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jimmy Everett, and listen, if you're interested in learning all the ins and outs, pros and cons to moving to or around Denver, Colorado, then this is a channel for you. So that subscribe button and notification icon popping up on your screen, make sure you click on that as I'm dropping new videos for you each and every week. And listen, as much as I love trying to be a little educational here on camera, I'm also a licensed mortgage broker covering the entire state of Colorado and team with some of Denver's most talented realtors. So the number and email you see on your screen, know that I am always the person answering your phone calls, answering your texts, answering your emails, there when and if you need me. Now that we have that fun-filled stuff out of the way, let's get to what we're here for, and that is the truth behind Denver, Colorado's winters and how cold does it really get here in Denver. All right, so I know the age old story is that, you know, our parents like to tell us they had to walk uphill in the snow, eight feet of snow, barefoot both ways. And I do have to admit that I remember the winters of Denver as a child being worse than they are now. But I think that's just a kid thing. So getting into the reality of what happens in Denver's winters, first and foremost, Denver has seasons. So you are actually going to experience spring and summer and fall, we had a great fall this year, and then going into winter. You're going to see a change. It doesn't just go from hot to cold to hot. So throughout our winter, Denver average temperatures range in the high 30s to low 40s. That's the average range. Now, will they drop into the single digits or at least the teens quite a bit of the time? They do. Denver and, and the surrounding areas do get cold. And obviously, as you get farther into the mountains, it's going to get even colder. But overall, from a temperature standpoint, Denver's winters are pretty mild. We tend to have a nice cold stretch sometime around January, or some years it'll be a little off. It might happen in February or March. But outside of that, it tends to be pretty mild. And even when it's cold, it isn't that frigid, bear crushing, you know, teeth rattling cold that you might experience in the Midwest or even on the East Coast. Now, I know the big reason you're here is point number three, and that is how much does it snow here? Now, it will surprise you to find out that it snows pretty late in the year in Denver. Typically, growing up, I remember we expected our first snow around Halloween. And I don't know, again, I don't know if that was a childhood thing or if it just was never the truth. But lately, snow has tended to fall into November, if not late November. Last year, 2021, was a little unnerving. We did not get our first snow until New Year's Eve. And so even on Christmas, like there was no snow. The temperatures were cold-ish, but not that bad. And it never really felt like the holidays because of it. That is abnormal for us. Typically, we have snow before that. Now, around uh, the beginning of December is also when the sun, little, little fun fact for you, the sun loses about 25 to 30% of its energy. So when it does start snowing, that's also when it starts sticking. We see the majority of our snow here in Denver in January, February, and historically, we get the most pileage in March. I don't think it snows the most days in March necessarily when you compare to how many times it might snow in January or February. I just know that historically, March tends to bring a lot of moisture. And so when it does snow, that is a month where we just get dumped on. And when it comes to snow, you can anticipate that you're going to see some storms in April and even at times into May. Uh, as hilarious as, uh, as hilarious, if I can use words, as this is, we actually got a snowstorm in early June this year. That was bizarre. But then again, you talk about not seeing snow until New Year's Eve. They just had to make it up to us somehow. And as much as we talk about snow and the seasons, point number four is the fact that weather here changes fast. And I don't mean, you know, I know people talk all the time about how you can't predict it. Well, you really can't. And I will give you an example. So just three nights ago, I woke up in the morning, I'm going to the gym, it's cold out and it's rainy. By the time I leave the gym, it's starting to snow, but it's still kind of light. Maybe an hour later, the snow's coming down pretty heavy, but it's been warm out. So the snow isn't sticking to the ground, 
but there's definitely piling of snow. Mid-afternoon, it's still coming. It would lay off for a little bit and then come back up. And we're talking, the time I'm, I'm talking about is late October as this is being recorded. So we get this snowstorm. I drive through the snowstorm to a coffee meeting at three o'clock in the afternoon. And as I'm having this coffee meeting and chatting it up with a realtor that I work with, he asked me, what are you gonna do after this? And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, weather's miserable outside. I'm just gonna go home and chill out. And I look behind me outside and the skies are blue, the sun's out, it looks gorgeous out. We walk outside and it's easily 55 degrees. That is Colorado. It went from cold rain to snow that doesn't stick to blue skies, sun out, made you wanna to go to a park all on the same day. So when you're talking about winter here, bring layers. It's a lot easier to overdo it and be able to take things off than to underdo it and find yourself out and about when the weather changes and you're freezing. This is why I tell my wife to bring a jacket every time we leave the house and she only listens to me 50% of the time. Point number five with weather in Denver is the fact that it is pretty dry here. And when I say pretty dry, I mean freaking dry. And so winter makes it worse. Now this is good in some ways. Our winter is not, as I mentioned, as bone chilling as you might have experienced if you live in humid climates that get cold. I think to this day, the coldest place I have ever been is New London, Connecticut on a submarine base where we were right on the water on the Thames River. And my God, the wind coming off that thing in the winter was brutal. I've also lived in Northeast Ohio, where again, in the Midwest, it got really cold. It was consistently you know, zero to five degrees. And that was bone rattling cold. Here in Denver, even at its coldest, there's not a lot of moisture in the air. So that cold doesn't cut through you. You're, you're not soaking wet cold the way you might feel in other places. At the same time, you need to carry your chapstick, you need to drink water, you need to put on lotion, because that dryness will crack your skin in a heartbeat. It'll affect your hands, it'll affect your feet, it'll affect your lips. I, every year, Again, my wife teases me for it, but every year I will get at least one or two cracks on my feet out of nowhere because I don't put on enough lotion and it's like all the dryness of Colorado just sucks the moisture from my feet. And I know you wanted to know that because you're gonna base your move to Denver on my feet cracking, but I just thought you should know. All right, so mixed in with all the weather changes and the fact that it gets dry and your feet cracked is the fact that Denver sees, we love to talk about it, 300 days of sunshine. Now, in reality, that number is closer to about 250, 255, because I mean, we're talking about days where you can truly enjoy sunshine. But one of the things that I really enjoy about winter here, and one of the things that I think really stand out about Colorado is the fact that when winter comes, we are not tied into the doom of gloom. I don't know where you're coming from, but living in Connecticut, living in Ohio, traveling around the Midwest, uh, living in a, in a lot of different parts of this country, there are certain areas where winter comes, even fall. It's late September, it's, it's mid-October, the sky turns gray and it stays that way for four, five, six months until springtime. Colorado is not that way. So even though it does get cold and you have the snow and you have the dry and all of these things, you're also reminded of beauty, of blue skies and sun. And there are still plenty of days, as we're gonna talk about more later, where you wanna get outside and enjoy it. Now, I cannot make a video about winter in Denver without discussing number seven, and that's the most important, and that is driving in the winter. And I need to preface. I am a firm believer that every time it snows for the first time, every time we get a good snow, people lose their absolute minds as though they do not know how to drive in snow. They either drive super slow, like they could wreck at any minute, or they think that they don't have to change their driving techniques at all. And in fact, all of a sudden their Subaru Outback can do 90 and they're driving like maniacs. Now, before you go over the top thinking you need to buy a new vehicle, I'm gonna tell you right now that no, you do not need a four-wheel drive vehicle for most purposes here in Denver. Now, 
Listen, if you're trying to go up to the mountains all the time, if you're a big skier, if you want to do snowshoeing or, you know, anyway, you want to get outdoors with your vehicle and go out and about, then yes, by all means, look into vehicles that have four wheel drive. But if you are mainly a city slash suburb driving person, a solid front wheel drive vehicle will do you just fine. I would recommend throwing on some tires that can handle snow. Um, I think sometimes tires can be overrated. Again, I don't think you have to go crazy over the top with your tire selection, but you also don't want just slicks that can't take uh, you know, any grooving of, of snow between your treads. The last thing when it comes to vehicles that you need is a rear wheel drive. And listen, I get it. There's plenty of muscle cars and all these phenomenal vehicles that are rear wheel drive and you're excited by them, but you are also the person that I'm gonna get stuck behind when you're trying to go up a little hill in some snow and your, wheel, your rear wheel drive car is not gonna be able to make it. And so me and about 57 other cars behind you are gonna be honking and screaming and saying all sorts of stuff. I mean, we're Colorado, so we're not fighters. We're just gonna say it from a distance with our windows up, but that's gonna be you. So if you can avoid rear wheel drive cars, do it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, especially if you have not driven in snow before, and I'll say it until the day I die, it's not about the snow, it is about ice. Snow hits the ground, it melts, maybe there's a thin layer, whatever, your tires, your vehicle will eat that up. It'll, it'll catch traction, no problem. Ice is where things go sideways. Ice is where, honestly, doesn't matter if you have a four wheel drive, front wheel, or rear wheel. You're in trouble if you hit ice. So if you have never driven in snow before, this is my suggestion for you. When you are here in Denver, wait for that first really good snowstorm. Wait to that first time where the snow stays on the ground after the fact. You don't have to be out while it's snowing. You can wait till it's done. And then go to an empty parking lot. Go somewhere where the snow, where there's not a lot of traffic, you know, or hopefully no traffic, but there's still snow. It's like pounded down snow on the ground and just drive around practice on it because I think more than anything that's what screws up drivers is when they get on the road with ice for the first time they don't know how to manage it and ice can get scary really quick especially if you haven't dealt with it so practice makes perfect and if you have a rear wheel drive and you want to do it that's the one time you can call me because we'll go out and we'll do donuts in your car because a parking lot is the only place you should be driving it in the snow clearly you can see that I take my driving in the snow personally. Uh, and last thing I will add is I don't have a remote starter on my car. I've never had a remote starter on my car. There are people who will rave by them. They'll rave by the fact that you can start your car and you can let it warm up and that you don't have to scrape your windows. Sure, get a remote starter. I mean, I have had a garage, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little spoiled there. But even when I have parked outside, I haven't had a remote starter. It has not changed my world. I just don't know what I'm missing. Okay, take that for what you will. And the next two are more little fun facts for you. So uh, point number eight, I'm losing track of my fingers. So point number eight, north versus south versus east or west facing driveways. So north facing driveways, AKA what I have, they suck. So when you're thinking about a home, one of the random things that I'm gonna suggest you pay attention to is which direction that your driveway faces. Reason being here in Colorado or really anywhere in this hemisphere is that uh, as the sun passes over my home, my north facing driveway is blocked from the sun by my house. So maybe a little sliver of my driveway gets hit by sun. Otherwise, it is pretty much always in the shade. What does that mean to me? It means that when it snows, snow will always stay does not melt, I will have to shovel more, it will turn to ice faster, it will get heavier faster. Uh, it's probably one of the only big negatives I have about my house, if I could just pivot my driveway, or if I could go back in time and have somebody else, not me, pay for one of those heated driveways, that'd be awesome, but you know, I don't have that kind of juice, we're not doing that. So, north facing driveway. Uh, is it a huge deal? No, but if you could manage to get a driveway that faces south, you'll appreciate it. And because I'm talking about this, you're gonna notice, especially like when you go up to the mountains, 
as you're walking down like certain town streets in the mountains, you'll see it for yourself. The south side of the road will be busy. There will be people outside walking and conversing. I mean, it's sunny out, it's beautiful. And on the north side, it'll be shielded from the sun. It's colder, nobody will be sitting outside. Very few people will be on the sidewalk. I mean, mountain towns in the wintertime are literally like 50% capacity as far as where people are. Everybody's on one side of the road and not the other. It's kind of hilarious. And speaking of mountain towns, you're probably thinking skiing and snowboarding because I mean, why else would you come to Colorado? And you're gonna see most of the resorts open in late November or early December. Obviously these resorts have gotten a lot better at creating their own snow, but as I mentioned earlier, the sun starts to lose that power around late November, early December. And so the snow that the mountains are getting also starts to accumulate, doesn't melt as fast, the resorts start opening. Uh, what you're gonna wanna know about that I wish I could give you better news, but driving I-70 can really, really suck. Uh, it sucks heading up, especially as you get to Eisenhower Tunnel, which is just, obviously it's a very long tunnel, so if it gets backed up or if there's any issue there, you're kind of hosed for a while, and it can be brutal coming back down. There are plenty of times where I-70 becomes just stopped traffic where people are hanging out for a couple hours waiting to come back down the hill. So ski resorts are awesome, traffic getting to them could be better or worse at times and we're just going to blame it on those people with rear wheel drive I warned you about. And because I feel the need to remind everyone when you go skiing, we mentioned the sun's out, altitude very high, uh, you will get burnt in the wintertime. Do not think that because it's cold you don't need to worry about the elements. So sunscreen, chapstick, lotion, all of the things. High altitude, sun will burn you, it's dry as hell, be prepared. And the last thing, and magical number 10, is that it's one of these great things about winter in Denver. I mentioned how much the sun shines. Well, Denver will have these like random, I call them miracle days of winter, where it's just been cold, it's been miserable, and then out of nowhere, it'll be 62 degrees out and sunny. And yeah, the snow is all melting, but you are outside in heck shorts sometimes but definitely in jeans and a t-shirt and everyone is outside on these days and sometimes it's not just one i mean there have, there's been times where like the entire month of february was in the high 50s low 60s and then when it finally snowed in march it was like we almost forgot that it was still winter time and we were pissy about it but those miracle days helps get us through makes denver's winters far easier to handle and far milder than many places I've lived before. But hey, if any of this hasn't made sense, you could come out here, you could wait for it to snow, you could drive over in your rear wheel car drive, oh wait, I don't even know if I said that right, rear wheel drive car. You could drive over, it'd probably take you five times as long, you could pack a snowball and you could smack me in the face with it, but to do that, you'd have to call me first. So that phone number and email popping up on your screen, I'm always the person answering those phone calls, answering those texts, answering those emails. There, winning if you need me in a snowstorm. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. I am your host, Jimmy Everts. That was the truth about Denver, Colorado winters. How cold does it really get in Denver? Until I see you next time, peace.